Greetings from Seoul, Korea, and welcome to the GSL. I'm Tasteless, and with me is Artosis. He's back. He's finally here. I'm, I'm going to be quiet, anymore. though, so that you can just keep on talking so by yourself. So you just sit here like this in the middle and keep talking like I that? I stand or? here looking handsome, <laughs> and you do all the talking. We have a, a very interesting day today. And by the way, if you haven't checked out yesterday, uh, yesterday's games, you have not lived yet. It was pretty crazy. It was good, Tasteless. It was good, man. Not going to lie. It was the most fun that I've had in the GSL so far. I can't believe uh, that our tournaments keep getting better and better. Yeah, how does that um, keep happening? I don't know why. Must have something to do with John. Must be John. Must have something to do with him. He's here today. He's looking at us, shaking his head. Um, so He's like, uh, no, it's you guys. I'm like, no, John, no, it's stop. you. It's this big compliment fest. Um, of course, this is the GSL. Uh, we are sponsored here by uh, the City of Seoul, LG, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm running short. I'm running short. we got a graphic at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. G-Skill. That was close. Sorry, guys. And uh, we want to point out that yeah. you can now watch GOM TV from a Mac. A lot of people have been asking for a long yeah. time. Sorry and, uh, about that. You know, getting that up took a little while, but uh, it's good now. Everything's cool. So, uh, you know, tell your friends. <laughs> we made friends Mac. with Mac, you know. We're, yep, yep. We're cool now. So tell, um, you know, your friends that use Mac that now they can get on GOMTV.net and uh, be part of the action. So, uh, Artosis, how yes. are you feeling since yesterday? That was a big moment. Tasis, I cried all night long out of happiness and sadness. No, it was a great match, and these players have shown so much skill that I have no idea what's going to actually happen today or tomorrow against these Korean players in the round of 16 matches. Anything could happen, Tasteless. Anything All could happen. of these players are capable of taking on their matches. Even Damaga against Nesty. He knows exactly what he did wrong against Nesty yesterday, and he's going to try to fix that for today. So we're just going to have to wait and see if his practice from last night and his understanding of that matchup goes through the roof and finally takes some games off Nesty. Of course, this tournament is free, um, but please donate. Uh, for our cause in Japan, we want to help our neighbors out. They've been having um, a very rough time, and uh, that's the reason why we made this event free. So whether you you know donate a small amount or a very large amount, please just donate something. Or even uh, a medium-large amount. Even a medium-large amount is fine. Okay, over to the round of 16 tournament. We are going to have, um, as you can see, here's a schedule here. Final is going to be on April 9th, um, sorry, at 6.10 p.m. Korean Standard Time. Yeah. So it's going to be starting uh, the final tournament at the time we normally start instead of later. And you can see the prize money for first place is unbelievably large. It is about 27,000 U.S. dollars. That's 30 million Korean won. Second place, 15 million. Third place and fourth place, 10 million. It's actually a huge prize tournament. Uh, this is really super duper important, Tasteless. Here are the brackets. As you can see, today we're going to have Huck, MVP, July, Nada, San, White Ra, Demaga, and ST. And, of course, tomorrow we're going to go on to Marine King, San Moonglade, TT1, MC, Mono, Jinro, and Annie Pro. Pretty wild set of matches all yep. over the place. We're doing that top bracket, the Group A, today. Yep. And uh, every single one of those matches, I am really, really excited for Taste. This is not yep. one of these days where I'm like, well, we have two good matches and two... Oh, uh, matches. Yeah. Or this is. The, well, you know what's interesting is uh, since yesterday, I've started to realize how much closer uh, these foreign players in particular are in skill yeah. to the uh, to the Korean uh, pro gamers. That's true. I mean, anyone who watched White Raw and Damaga play yesterday, you know that they are capable of not only They're winning scary, their first man. rounds, but perhaps the whole tournament. They are pretty scary. Hmm. Um I think we're definitely going to have, you know, a non-Korean, maybe more than one, uh, in the final four. It would not shock me at all. It's going to be a pretty exciting day, um, and I just can't wait to get these games started. We're going to introduce the players in a little bit here. We are tasteless. The first match, well, really the first match, the second match, the third match, and the fourth match. I'm excited about all of them. They are going to be absolutely great. Let's take a look at our first match. It is going to be Huck from TeamLiquid.net going up against I'm MVP. Likely the strongest Terran in the whole wide world. Pretty exciting matchup there. Of course, MVP being taken out yesterday by Damaga. You know, I was actually amazed at how good both those games were. Yeah. They were actually so close. I did not expect um, Damaga to, to take on MVP on any level 
on that first map he played on. Well, I tell you what, he actually, from the first day, he was telling me, you know what, I can take out MVP. You put me against him, I will slay him. And that he did, Tasteless. But now we're going to see, can Huck do the same? Let's talk to him backstage. He's pretty confident. He thinks he can do it. Yeah, and, uh, like he's probably going to go for standard play. Yeah, um, a lot of warp gate units, I think. Maybe yep. a few Colossi in there. He may mix it up on the fly, but at least that's what he told us his game plan was. Now we're going to take a look at his opponent, MVP. This guy, we called him the Game Genie Terran because he doesn't die, but i got to say, uh, that image is starting to fade away. We're well, seeing people catch he up may to die more, but he still does make that unfair amount of units tasteless. Yes. So he's got at least some cheat codes left in that Game Genie. At least some of the games still work with Game Genie right now. That's right. Yeah, I got to say, this guy, I think, has the best decision-making mid-game I've ever seen. Yeah, he's he's a phenomenal Terran. You know, he, he had a few bumpy games recently, but you can't really judge someone by two, three best-of-three matches. That, you know, you have right, one right. off day, and suddenly, here you are in Code A. What do you want to say? He's a great player still. He has been playing pretty well lately. Those games against Damaga were really of a high level, even though he ended up losing. Yeah, that so. was actually um, that was actually quite an interesting day we had yesterday. MVP, I think, is the favorite here, but Liquid Huck is a very solid player, and I think um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Certainly. Yeah. We're going to have some great maps for it, Tasteless, some very big maps. I'm excited about this first map in particular. We're going to see some Terminus reaction. And uh, my reaction to that is that it's going to be pretty good. Protoss versus Terran on that map. We normally see a lot of epic games there. Very hard to kill each other. Huck All right. yawning. Wow. Yep. That's, that's confidence for you. That's definitely not a sign of him having any anxiety or nerve issues yeah. in that booth. He's got to be feeling good. You know, Huck is definitely a player um, who's confident in himself. He's realistic about his skill level. And, um, you know... I'm looking forward to this game. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I do think MVP is still the favorite here. And it's time. The countdown has started. So we're going to get this going here. I'm Tasis. With me is our Tosis. We're Tastosis, the casting archon here at the GSL. I can't wait, Tasis. This is pretty exciting. It's going to be pretty crazy. So, guys, get on your instant messengers. Tell your friends to tune in and join us here as we have this very international tournament. Uh, at the Global Start League. That's right. You get on Facebook, poke your friends. Start be like, why you them. poke me? Because the GSL is on. That's right. All right, it's on. We're going to do this TVP on Terminus. Great. Great. All right, over here in the red, we have our Protoss player from Canada. He's been in Korea for quite some time. Very solid. Liquid Pop the site teamliquid.net great site tasteless big love out to all the people there watching us all right in the north I am MVP. we have mvps very solid um generally doesn't try to end the game right away no he tends that, to go for mid game and late game he does mix and cheese from time to time but it's pretty rare overall yeah just enough cheese yeah just here and there you know, to take out players that might be weak to it. And to keep himself uh, not as guessable. I'm actually just so excited to see what strategies they both open up with. You know, are, is someone going to try to do something decisive and get a huge advantage early? Or are we just going to see a macro game? You know, the map is huge. They're as far away from each other as you can possibly get. So... Um, you know, he's going to wall in. Now, remember, MVP did lose to Squirtle yeah. on this map. I think this is not an easy map. Um, not a straightforward map, I should say, for a Terran against a Protoss. Yeah, it's not one of these small maps where you can just make a bunch of units and hit some funny stim timing. It's definitely one where you have to control the map a little bit more. You have to rely maybe on some planetary fortresses. You have to have some really good map awareness, some good drops. And if you don't do all that, Tasteless, you should not expect to win against a top-level Protoss like Huck. Yeah, medevacs are critical on this map. you got to do medevac drops. Because, of course, it's hard to push. Uh, Marine Marauder, of course, also very good. You don't tend to see siege tanks in this matchup on this map because you're just not going to do your immobile. Protoss is going to take the whole map easily. Quite true. But you always do have to remember that uh, 
if it gets into a supreme late game and Protoss has a really good unit composition, you are going to need something more than Marines and Marauders. Oftentimes that is going to be. Oh tanks. yeah, you got to mix your tech up. Yeah. I don't know. We might we might disagree here, but I don't like tank play on this map. Looks like um, MVP is going to go ahead and um, take a quick expansion here. Pretty common. One barracks expand. I like how a lot of these guys still wall in at the ramp uh, when they expand. Yeah, you don't want people running by that bunker tastes going up the ramp with a few stalkers. That type of play can be very, very annoying. MVP blocking any scouts with the Marines out in front. Huck chrono boosting a stalker up. My bet is he'll just make a nexus. Yeah, I think that we're going to see Nexus pretty quickly from him. Just setting up a Zealot and a couple Stalkers. Try to get up there, scout exactly what's going on. You know, I wish we'd see Nexus first more often on yeah, this map. That's, I agree with you fully, Tasteless. Uh, it's definitely a map that you can get away with it against Terran quite often, especially MVP. He's going to be a player that, you know, wants to play a macro game more times than not. And the 16 Nexus is going to be a good counter to something like that. So we got a factory on the way here. Oh, Huck playing kind of interestingly here, Tasteless. He's actually adding some gateways at the moment. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he might be going for a rush. Yeah. Three warp gate rush here. Looks like it may be. And I don't know what he's doing with those stalkers. Well, as long as you don't lose any real hit points, the shields will come back. It just costs a few minerals, a little bit of mining time. As long, but as soon as you take some real damage on that stalker, you're going to feel a little bit dumb. <laughs> yeah. Big oops. Uh oh. I was trying to be cool. I'm not. But uh, Huck, of course, did not take any. All right, he might actually save those chrono boosts to chrono boost the three gateways in his base. Yep, that's what he's going to do. He's going to get uh, two waves of warp gate units out, and he's going to rush in here. That's how this rush works. But actually, he is supply block tasteless. Oh, my god! Big mistake here by Huck. Is the pylon about block. to finish? Nope. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my word. Oh, my lord. And the warp gate's ready to make units, but cannot. And here we go. Wow, look at that. Nice force fielding there. Going to target down some SCVs, perhaps, taking some damage, but dealing some as well. His expansion, though, going to be a lot later than MVP's. You know, sometimes I wonder if it's actually better to just go run by the bunker and go behind the uh, command center. Mm. Well, you got to be careful if they do uh, crunch some SCVs in there, trap all your stuff. You take a lot of damage really quickly from Marines. Looks like he's going to try to do it one more time here. Uh, siege oh, mode is almost done. Yeah, very good choice by MVP. That's going to allow him to hold on to any attacks that Huck does do. In fact, Huck is adding two more gates right now, Tesla. So it looks like he may try some sort of modified MC attack where you just make a ton of units and try to kill your opponent. But the siege tank has siege mode. The stalker's taking some pretty serious damage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's not uh, moving it. Move your units, man. The stalker's like, what is happening? Ah! No! And and I'm not sure, man. What I don't know. He Huck must have not been paying there. attention. That was painful to watch. Huck was alt-tabbed, posting on the TeamLiquid.net forums or something, I man. I don't know. Um, man, that was weird. I mean, it's good he had the units on hold position, but I'm surprised he didn't notice when he was under attack. Mm. Well, uh, MVP definitely going to be a little bit. Here, he goes, Here we go. He's going to go for it. And Sea Chank's targeting down those sentries, and as those sentries die, Huck's late game is going to suffer. He's got to get a lot of damage done right now. Not even being able to get the bunker so far. MVP moving that command center, and he is going to stabilize really, really easily from here. Just send a Sea Chank down with that bunker, and he can land that command center once you know, again. Just like TVP and StarCraft 1, after they have Sea Chanks, you can't run by the command center. Yeah. I mean, by, by the bunker. Or and, if you do, you have to be very careful about it. By the way, right now, Cloak and a Banshee on the way for MVP. Huck has spent all his money on Warp Gates, so he's going to be in a lot of trouble. But here he goes. He's trying to break through again. And uh, 